This sound file contains the spoken version of the Wikipedia article on the Asian century. The material was recorded on December 1st, 2017. The Asian Century, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. The Asian Century is the projected 21st century dominance of Asian politics and culture, assuming certain demographic and economic trends persist. The concept of the Asian Century parallels the characterization of the 20th century as the American Century and the 19th century as Britain's Imperial Century. A 2011 study by the Asian Development Bank found that an additional 3 billion Asians could enjoy living standards similar to those in Europe today, and the region could account for over half of global output by the middle of this century. It warned, however, that the Asian century is not preordained. Recently, a new term called New Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere was invented in relations to China's rising power and its ambition to build a greater East Asian community compromising all the countries in the region. The growing importance and actions of unity in Asia and maturing relationship within countries in the region further solidify the creation of the 21st Asian century. Section 1. Origin In 1924, Karl Haushofer used the term, quote, Pacific Age, end quote, envisioning the growth of Japan, China, and India. Quote, a giant space is expanding before our eyes with forces pouring into it which await the dawn of the Pacific Age, the successor of the Atlantic Age, the over-age Mediterranean and European air, end quote. The phrase Asian century arose in the mid to late 1980s and is attributed to a 1988 meeting with People's Republic of China leader Deng Xiaoping and Indian Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi in which Deng said that Quote, in recent years, people have been saying that the next century will be the century of Asia and the Pacific, as if that were sure to be the case. I disagree with this view, end quote. Prior to this, it made an appearance in a 1985 U.S. Senate Committee on Foreign Relations hearing. It has been subsequently reaffirmed by Asian political leaders and is now a popularly used term in the media. Section 2. Reasons Asia's robust economic performance over the three decades preceding 2010, compared to that in the rest of the world, made perhaps the strongest case yet for the possibility of an Asian century. Although this difference in economic performance had been recognized for some time, specific individual setbacks, such as the 1997 Asian financial crisis, tended to hide the broad sweep and general tendency. By the early 21st century, however, a strong case could be made that this stronger Asian performance was not just sustainable, but held a force and magnitude that could significantly alter the distribution of power on the planet. Coming in its wake, global leadership in a range of significant areas, international diplomacy, military strength, technology, and soft power, might also, as a consequence, be assumed by one or more of Asia's nation states. Many scholars have provided factors that have contributed to the significant Asian development. Kishore Mabubani provides seven pillars that rendered the Asian countries to excel and provided themselves with the possibility to become compatible with the Western counterparts. The seven pillars include free market economics, science and technology, meritocracy, pragmatism, cultural peace, rule of law, and education. Demographics Population growth in Asia is expected to continue through at least the first half of the 21st century, though it has slowed significantly since the late 20th century. At 4 billion people in the beginning of the 21st century, the Asian population is predicted to grow to more than 5 billion by 2050. While its percent of the world population is not expected to greatly change, North American and European shares of the global population are expected to decline. Economics the major driver is continued productivity growth in Asia, particularly in China and India, as living standards rise. Even without completely converging with European or North American living standards, Asia's might produce half of global GDP by 2050. This is a large shift compared to the immediate post-Cold War when North America and Europe combined produced half of global GDP. A 2011 study by the Asian Development Bank stated that, quote, by nearly doubling its share of global gross domestic product to 52% by 2050, 
Asia would regain the dominant economic position it held some 300 years ago before the Industrial Revolution. The notion of the Asian century assumes that Asian economies can maintain their momentum for another 40 years, adapt to shifting global economic and technological environment, and continually recreate comparative advantages. In this scenario, according to 2011 modeling by the Asian Development Bank, Asia's GDP would increase from $17 trillion in 2010 to $174 trillion in 2050, or half of global GDP. In the same study, the Asian Development Bank estimates that seven economies would lead Asia's powerhouse growth under the Asian century scenario. The region would have no poor countries compared with eight poor countries in 2011. Since China's economic reforms in the late 1970s and early 1990s, the Chinese economy has enjoyed three decades of economic growth rates between 8% and 10%. The Indian economy began a similar, albeit slower, ascent at the end of the 1980s and early 1990s and has averaged around 4% during this period, though growing slightly over 8% in 2005 and hitting 9.2% in 2006 before slowing to 6% in 2009 then reaching 8.9% in 2010. A Goldman Sachs report suggests that the Indian economy could surpass the U.S. economy by 2043, but India, quote, will remain a low-income country for several decades, with per capita incomes well below its other BRIC peers. If India fulfills its growth potential, it could become a motor for the world economy and a key contributor to generating spending growth, end quote. Both of these developments involved policy of a degree of managed liberalization of the economy as well as a turning outwards of the economy towards globalization. The magnitude of this liberalization and globalization is still subject to debate. They were part of conscious decisions by key political leaders, especially in India and the People's Republic of China. Also the populations of the two countries offer a potential market of over two and a quarter billion. The development of the internal consumer market in these two countries has been a major basis for economic development. This has enabled much higher national growth rates for mainland China and India in comparison to Japan, the EU, and even the US. The international cost advantage on goods and services based on cheaper labor costs has enabled these two countries to exert a global competitive pressure. The term Easternization has been used to refer to the spread of Oriental, mainly Japanese, management techniques to the West. The trend for greater Asian economic dominance has also been based on the explorations of recent historic economic trends. Goldman Sachs in its BRIC economic forecast highlighted the trend towards mainland China becoming the largest and India the second largest economies by the year 2050 in terms of GDP. The report also predicted the type of industry that each nation would dominate, leading some to deem mainland China, quote, the industrial workshop of the world, end quote, and India, quote, one of the greatest service societies, end quote. As of 2009, the majority of the countries that are considered newly industrialized are in Asia. By 2050, the East Asian and South Asian economies will have increased by over 20 times. With that comes a rise in human development index, the index used to measure the standards of living. India's HDI will approach 0.8, East Asia's would approach 0.94, or fairly close to the living standards of the Western nations, such as the EU and the US. This would mean that it would be rather difficult to determine the difference in wealth of the two. Because of East Asian and Indian populations, their economy would be very large, and if current trends continue, India's long-term population could approach double that of China. East Asia could surpass all Western nations' combined economies as early as 2030. South Asia could soon follow if the hundreds of millions in poverty continue to be lifted into the middle class. Construction Projects it is projected that the most groundbreaking construction projects will take place in Asia within the approaching years. As a symbol of economic power, super tall skyscrapers have been erected in Asia, and more projects are currently being conceived and begun in Asia than in any other region of the world. Completed projects include the Petronas Tower of Kuala Lumpur, the Shanghai World Financial Center, the International Finance Center in Hong Kong, Taipei 101 in Taiwan, and the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Future buildings promise to be taller, like the Shanghai Tower and the India Tower. Culture Culturally, the Asian century is symbolized by Indian genre films, Hong Kong genre films, Japanese animation, and the Korean wave. The awareness of Asian cultures may be part of a much more culturally aware world 
as proposed in the Clash of Civilizations thesis. Equally, the affirmation of Asian cultures affects the identity politics of Asians in Asia and outside in their Asian diaspora. The gross national cool of Japan is soaring. Japanese cultural products, including TV shows, are undoubtedly quote in unquote among American audiences and have been for years. About 2.3 million people studied the language worldwide in 2003. 900,000 South Koreans, 389,000 Chinese, 381,000 Australians, and 140,000 Americans study Japanese in lower and higher educational institutions. Feng Shui books top the nonfiction bestseller lists, and Feng Shui schools have multiplied. Major banks and multinational corporations employ Feng Shui consultants to advise them on the organization of their offices. There has been a readiness to supplement Eastern forms of medicine, therapy, and massage, and reject traditional Western medicine in favor of techniques such as acupressure and acupuncture. Practices such as moxibustion and shiatsu enjoy enormous popularity in the West. So do virtually all the Eastern martial arts such as Kung Fu, Judo, Karate, Aikido, Taekwondo, Kendo, Jiu Jitsu, Tai Chi, Kwai Kong, Bagua, and Zing Yi, with their many associated schools and subforms. Asian cuisine is quite popular in the West due to Asian emigration and subsequent interests from non Asians into Asian ingredients and food. Even small towns in Britain, Canada, Scandinavia, or the United States generally have at least one Indian or Chinese restaurant. Restaurants serving pan Asian or Asian inspired cuisine have also opened across North America, Australia, and other parts of the world. P.F. Chang's China Bistro and Pee Wee Asian Diner, which serve Asian and Asian-inspired food, is found across the United States and in regards for the former in other parts of the world as well. Asian Beer Cafe in Melbourne serves a selection of Asian content inspired by the cuisines of East Asia, Southeast Asia, and India. Asian-inspired food products have also been launched, including from noodle brand Maggi, in Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, and the UK, an Asian-inspired range of noodles known as Maggi Fusian and a long-running range in Germany and Austria known as Maggi Magic Asia includes a range of noodles inspired by food dishes found in China, Japan, Korea, India, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, and Thailand. Yoga has gained popularity outside India and the rest of Asia and has entered mainstream culture in the Western world. Though the use of English continues to spread, Asian languages are becoming more popular to teach and study outside the continent. The study of Chinese has recently gained greater attention in the United States owing to a growing belief in the economic advantages of knowing it. It is being encouraged through the PRC's support of Confucius Institutes, which have opened in numerous nations to teach the Chinese language and culture. Chinese has been rated as the second most to use language on the internet with nearly a quarter speaking Chinese. Japanese came as fourth and Korean as tenth as of 2010. According to the CIA, China hosted the most users, Japan the third, India the fourth, and South Korea as the tenth as of 2008. India has the largest film industry in the world. An Indian film industry produces more films than Nollywood and Hollywood. In the early years of the 20th century, very few people were vegetarians. The figure given for the United Kingdom during World War II was 100,000 out of a population of some 50 million, around 0.2% of the total. By the 1990s, the figure was estimated as between 4.2% and 11% of the British population and rising rapidly. As Porritt and Winner observe, as recently as the 1960s and early 70s, quote, being a vegetarian was considered distinctively odd, unquote, but, quote, it is now both respectable and commonplace, unquote. The rising popularity of the Korean wave, particularly K-pop and Korean dramas outside Asia, has led to the establishment of services to sustain this demand. Vicky and Drama Fever are examples of services providing Korean dramas to international viewers alongside other Asian content. SBS Pop Asia and Asian Pop Radio are two radio-related music services propagating the proliferation of K-pop throughout Australia. Apart from K-pop, Asian Pop Radio is also devoted to other Asian pop music originating from Indonesia, Thailand, Japan, Malaysia, and Singapore. 
Similarly, SBS Pop Asia focuses on other East Asian pop music from China and Japan and to some extent Southeast Asian pop music in conjunction with K-pop. The rising popularity of Asian-related content has resulted in, quote, SBS Pop Asia, unquote, becoming a brand name for SBS content such as TV shows and news originating from Asia such as China, South Korea, Japan, and India. The growing awareness and popularity of Eastern culture and philosophies in the West has led to Eastern cultural objects being sold in these countries, the most well-known being statues of the Buddha, which range from statues sold for the garden to items sold for the house. Statues of Hindu gods such as Ganesha and East Asian iconography such as the yin and the yang are also sold in many stores in Western countries. Ishka, a chain store in Australia, sells many Asian origin content, particularly from India. The selling of Eastern cultural objects has however been met by criticism, with some saying many who buy these items do not understand the significance of them and that it is a form of Orientalism. Emojis, which originated in Japan and later spread to other parts of Asia, have now become mainstream in Western societies. Eastern emoticons, particularly Japanese emoticons known as, quote, keomoji, unquote, have also become popular in the West in conjunction with Western origin emoticons, resulting in a blend of the two. A 2006 study showed North American instant messaging users rated the importance of using emoticons much lower than Indian and East Asian users. However, by the 2010s, a 2013 questionnaire showed 74% of people in the U.S. responded positively to the question, quote, Do you use stickers or emoji in messaging apps? Unquote. Characters used as emoticons that are used in certain Asian languages such as Kannada, an Indian language, has spread to and become popular to use on Western websites after initially being used on Japanese sites such as 2Channel. Religion as recently as the 1950s, Crane Brinton, the distinguished historian of ideas, could dismiss, quote, modern groups that appeal to Eastern wisdom, unquote, as being in effect, quote, sectarian, unquote, quote, marginal, unquote, and, quote, outside the main current of Western thought and feeling, unquote. Yet some Westerners have converted to Eastern religions or at least have shown an interest in them. An example is Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, whom the Beatles followed, first to Bangor and Wells in 1967, and subsequently to India to study Transcendental Meditation in 1968. The Dalai Lama, whose book The Art of Happiness became a bestseller, can attract huge crowds in New York's Central Park or London's Wembley Stadium. Buddhism in some countries is the second biggest religion. FWBO is one of the biggest and fastest growing Buddhist organizations in the West. Belief in reincarnation has never been a part of official Christian or Jewish teaching, or at least in Christianity, it has been a formal heresy since it was rejected by a narrow margin at the Second Council of Constantinople in 553 AD. However, nearly all polling in Western countries reveals significant levels of this belief. Quote, puzzled people, unquote, undertaken in the 1940s suggested that only 4% of people in Britain believed in reincarnation. Geoffrey Gorer's survey, carried out a few years later, arrived at 5%. However, this figure had reached 18% by 1967, only to increase further to a sizable 29% by 1979, a good six-fold increase on the earlier, quote, puzzled people, unquote, figure. Eileen Barker has reported that around one-fifth of Europeans now say that they believe in reincarnation. Mindfulness and Buddhist meditation, both very popular in Asia, have both been gaining popularity in the West. Politics The global political position of China and to a lesser extent India has risen in international bodies amongst the world powers, leading the United States and European Union to become more active in the process of engagement with these two countries. China is also a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council. Although India is not a permanent member, it is possible that it will become one or at least gain a more influential position. Japan is also attempting to become a permanent member, though the attempts of both are opposed by other Asian countries. An Asian regional bloc may be further developed in the 21st century around ASAN and other bodies on the basis of free trade agreements. However, there is some political concern amongst the national leaderships of different Asian countries about the People's Republic of China's 
hegemonic ambitions in the region. Another new organization, the East Asian Summit, could also possibly create an EU-like trade zone. The Russian Prime Minister Yevgeny Primakov encouraged the idea of a triple alliance between Russia, the People's Republic of China, and India, first formulated by Indian strategist Madhav Das Nalapat in 1983, and supported the idea of a multipolar world. With the November 2006 visit of Hu Jintao to India, the idea seems to be gaining some momentum. Human Capital The 2007 World Bank report on globalization notes that, quote, rising education levels were also important, boosting Asian growth on average by 0.75 to two percentage points." Unquote. The rapid expansion of human capital through quality education throughout Asia has played a significant role in experiencing quote, higher life expectancy and economic growth and even to the quality of institutions and whether societies will make the transition into modern democracies." Unquote. 3G Global Growth Generators the Asian countries with the most promising growth prospects are Bangladesh, China, India, Indonesia, Iraq, Mongolia, the Philippines, Sri Lanka, and Vietnam. Developing Asia is projected to be the fastest growing region until 2050, driven by population and income growth. 9 of 11 3G countries come from Asia. Vietnam has the highest global growth generators index. China is second with 0.81 followed by India's 0.71. Based on a report from the HSBC Trade Confidence Index and HSBC Trade Forecast, there are four countries with significant trade volume growth, Egypt, India, Vietnam, and Indonesia, with growth is projected to reach at least 7.3% per year until 2025. Next 11. The next 11 are the 11 countries, Bangladesh, Egypt, Indonesia, Iran, Mexico, Nigeria, Pakistan, the Philippines, Turkey, South Korea, and Vietnam, identified by the Goldman Sachs Investment Bank and economist Jim O'Neill in a research paper as having a high potential of becoming, along with the BRICS, the world's largest economies in the 21st century. The bank chose these states, all with promising outlooks for investment and future growth, on December 12, 2005. At the end of 2011, the four major countries, Mexico, Indonesia, Nigeria, and Turkey, also known as MINT, made up 73% of all next 11 GDP. BRIC GDP was $13.5 trillion, while MIKT GDP at almost 30% of that, $3.9 trillion. Section 3. Challenges to Realizing the Asian Century Asia's growth is not guaranteed. Its leaders will have to manage multiple risks and challenges, particularly growing inequality within countries in which wealth and opportunities are confined to the upper echelons. This could undermine social cohesion and stability. Many Asian countries will not be able to make the necessary investments in infrastructure, education, and government policies that would help them avoid the middle income trap. Intense competition for finite natural resources, such as land, water, fuel, or food, as newly affluent Asians aspire to higher standards of living. Global warming and climate change, which could threaten agricultural production, coastal populations, and numerous major urban areas. Rampant corruption, which plagues many Asian governments. Aging population can have a direct influence on the continuous economic development of Asian countries in terms of such as, but not limited to, declining labor force, change of consumption patterns, strain on public finances, and so on. Section 4. Criticism Despite forecasts that predict the rising economic and political strength of Asia, the idea of an Asian century has faced criticism. This has included the possibility that the continuing high rate of growth could lead to revolution, economic slumps, and environmental problems especially in mainland China. Some believe that the 21st century will be multipolar and no one country or continent will have such a concentration of influence. However, some proponents of the Asian century respond that since the two most populous countries, China and India, are in Asia, then it's only natural that they will play a bigger role in the world's affairs than smaller countries, and thus it won't be a multipolar century. Finally, although the British Empire was a superpower during the 19th century, 
controlling a nearly quarter of the world's area and population, during the 20th century there was still a balance of political power with the British and other European colonial empires from 1900 until 1945 and with the U.S. and the Soviet Union from 1945 until 1991. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0 Unported License available at http colon forward slash forward slash creativecommons.org forward slash licenses forward slash by dash sa forward slash 3.0